It is time to see Telnet in action. And before we get started with this section, I did want to mention that I did not delete VLAN 10 as I had mentioned at the end of the previous video. I've kept it at 10.1.1.2 slash 24. The default gateway setting is the same. Everything else is the same. And we will be back here on the rack very soon. But what I want to talk to you about for a minute is a little bit of Telnet theory. We're running on TCP port 23, an excellent port to remember for your exams and also for not blocking it with an ACL later. And it's a fantastic way to logically hop around a network, which beats physically hopping around a network. Even if all the devices you're working with are in one rack, whether that be in a home lab or whether that be in a production network, instead of continually moving your console cable around from one console port to another, you can just telnet from one device to another, as long as you keep a few simple rules in mind. And these are great simple rules to keep in mind for before you try telnetting, because sometimes, as we're going to see, when you find out in the middle of your telnet attempt and maybe you're at home and you're telnetting somewhere else, that could be a bit of a sticky wicket. So let's go ahead and we're going to use this lab. I'm going to bring the switch right back up because we need to talk about these VTY things here at the bottom of the config. And let me go up here, the very bottom of the config. And we've worked with the console port. We know what exact timeout and logging synchronous are, those lab commands. They're on here. And notice that we have two groups of something called a line VTY. And these are the virtual terminal lines that we use to connect to a device via Telnet. You'll find more of them by default on a switch than you will a router because your switch connections, your switches have 16 VTY lines, your routers have five. And I know it looks like this has 15 VTY lines, but notice it starts with zero. And if you count on your fingers and take your shoes off like I do and use a couple of toes, you will see that that is indeed 16. So the thing is, what about this login already being there though? That's pretty weird because we haven't seen that before. We didn't see it, I believe, on the console line. We don't see it there now. So why is this there by default? Hmm, it's starting to sound like we could telnet to a Cisco device by default. So we may just try that here in just a moment. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and try it now. Let's go over to router one. And we'll just ping 10.1.1.2. I'm going to move that up a little bit. It's a little flat. And there we go. So I was pinging it with no problem at all. Nothing's changed connectivity-wise since the last lab. So I'm going to do a Telnet 10.1.1.2. And we are rejected immediately and kind of rejected in an interesting way because you see first the line is trying 10.1.1.2 and you get a couple dots and then open. And open is usually good, right? Well, the connection opened and then we have something called password required but none set, which is a pretty explicit security message for this day and age. Because usually, of course, let's say you forget a username or a password at really any website that requires a login or and you put the wrong information in. One of them is wrong, either your username or your password. It's a rare website now that will tell you which one you got wrong. You know, usually it's going to say, well, you know, some of the login information you have provided is incomplete. And that's because in the older days when you were prompted for a username and password and the site would say, hey, your password's wrong, that's telling a potential intruder who may be trying to get in that way, hey, I got the username right. So it's I'm kind of surprised you still see password required but none set here, but I guess they figure you can't do anything about it because while login is enabled on our Cisco switch by default, and it would be on the router as well, you'll see the word login under the VTY lines, a password is certainly not set because I think we can all agree that a default Telnet password on a Cisco device would be a very, very bad idea. So we have to configure that. And for that, let's hop over to the switch and configure the VTY lines. And notice how I do this. I'm going to do all the lines at one time, both groups. You don't have to do line VTY04 and then line VTY515. And you're never going to put a password on each individual line. We're putting a one-size-fits-all password here. And it's pretty darn simple. You just have password, and we have a zero or a seven and a line. So I'm just going to put in the unencrypted clear text. I like that. It explains to you what unencrypted is. Clear text, line, password. And I'm going to use the word success here. So that's all there is to it so far. I'll just go ahead and do a save while I go over to router one. And now I'll try the Telnet again. And hey, you know, something a little different here. 
we're getting prompted for a password. Of course, we weren't prompted for a password before because the VTY lines require one. So it said trying 10.1.1.2 open user access verification. It's even prompting you for a password. So I will put in success, I hope. And I think I got timed out on that first one as I was entering. At least that's the story I'm sticking with. But it took me two attempts, no problem. And look at the prompt. Look where I am. I've telneted over to that switch. Fantastic, right? So now let's say, you know, I wanted, even in a lab environment, it's like, okay, I want to telnet over to that switch because I want to put some commands on it. Well, notice where I am by default. User exec, we see the arrow head there. So I'm in user exec by default, and we can do a lot of looking around. It's, it's kind of, it's what I used to call tourist mode. You can look around a lot, but you can't touch anything. You can run a lot of show commands from user exec, but you can't really do anything there. So I need to get up into enable mode and oh no password set i do not understand this what do you mean no password set i just set one i was over on the switch and i set one here's the deal with telnet and you've already seen that of course the vty lines require a password and the user is put into user exec by default but here's what i really want you to remember about telnet beyond beyond that i should say by default you're put into user exec and again by default Unless there is an enable password or an enable secret set on the device you're telnetting to, you're not going to be able to enter enable mode. I could hit enable as many times as I want to, <clears throat> pardon me, right here, and it's just going to keep saying no password set, no password set. So again, the switch is telling you what the problem is, but you couldn't do anything about it via telnet. You know, you call someone if it was a physically different location and ask them to set an enable password for you. Uh, but otherwise, you know, you're sure out of luck. So let's go ahead and set an enable password. Let's go back over. I'm going to exit out of here. EXIT. And you get a little message there, connection closed by foreign host. And actually, we're at the seven minute mark. So I'm going to stop here. And when we come back, we'll put an enable password on. We'll walk through the entire process. And then I'll tell you a little bit of a workaround, if you will, for that. And we'll pick up with that right coming up next.